Hello our viewers, this is Kenganda where we show you different aspects of life in Kenya and Uganda. My name is Maria Lala and I'm in Uganda. Next to me is one of the best entrepreneurs in Uganda and one of the ladies I look up to when it comes to fashion and all that. Um, I'm just going to introduce her to you and she'll tell you more about herself. Let's go. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. A little bit tired, um, but I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> you look so beautiful. Thank you. Uh, tell, tell our viewers more about you. Um, my name is Sochola Dubois. Um, I'm Ugandan. Um, I have a business. This is my business. I'm an art collector, art lover. I also have my own brand of sparkling wine from South Africa. So everything's within this establishment. I also design my own clothes, this is one of them, mainly from African print. From African print. Um, let me take you back. What is the inspiration between, uh, that, that drove you to doing all these things? Um, it's just that I just wanted to be an independent woman. I come from a background where a lot of my female family have always worked really, really hard. My mother was an entrepreneur, she worked. A lot of my family, my sisters are all entrepreneurs, they have their own businesses. So it's just in me to have, have a passion for, for work and just being independent and I like to be driven. What did it take you to be um, where you are right now? Because I've, I've, I've heard of your name for a long, long time actually. Yeah. I looked up, uh, up to you like an, a fashion icon, like someone who has done her own business and she's really successful. Because when you talk about fashion yeah. in Uganda, you talk about Su Ochara. Okay. I've heard that name so much. How did you get there? I, like I said, I, I come from a, a fashion background. My family, my aunt used to have a shop on Kampala Road called Peacock Fashions. So when I was young, about nine years of age, I started modeling for her and hence the interest. She made a little clothes with powerful women in the industry, I mean, in around the world, Bob Marley's mother, lots of first ladies of different countries, uh, people in the music industry. So I used to spend a lot of time in her shop on Kampala Road. So I picked up the interest and I started designing my own clothes. And then when I came back to Kampala, I thought, this is something that I've always wanted to do. And people encouraged me and said, oh my gosh, you're so stylish. Can you make something for me? So I thought, yeah, why not? When exactly did you start uh, this fashion and um, doing it as a business and all that? When did you come back to Kampala? I, you, you talked about being away and coming yeah, back to Kampala. I've, I moved back permanently two years ago. And I just wanted um, to have a structured day. Like I said, I'm driven. So I thought, found this my friend I found, actually found this place and he wanted creatives to come together um, so I found this space turned it into something that I was comfortable with I thought if I'm going to spend a lot of time away from home I need a space that somewhat is like my home so that's why you see I have a bed I have a boudoir and it's like my little home away from home so this is about 18 months ago oh. that was getting me to eat out uh, how you found the place what did it take you to get uh, to collect all these things? Did you get them from Uganda or you've been traveling and collecting a lot of things to, to make up uh, the whole Casa de Loi look so fine? Um, a lot of the stuff is from Africa, mainly the Congo. I have some things from Ethiopia. Uh, my husband is a collector. He's been collecting for over 30 years. So I met him when he was collecting and our passion for art brought us together. Then um, getting you back to 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 Casa de Loi, it's 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 like uh, it's very hard in Kampala to start up a business and to become successful all of a sudden, and it's really hard to make a place and it attracts people in Kampala. So I find this place really unique. The, the first moment I enter this place, it's it's really nice and unique. What did it take you to 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 think about what is going to to be nice before the eyes of Ugandans? Let's say it wasn't about Ugandans. I never do things for anybody, mm -hmm. you know, for anyone to like me. Like when I wake up every day, I dress for me. I'm not waking up and getting dressed to impress people out there or. You know, when I opened this place, I thought, let me do, and you know, create a space for people that people to love. I created a space that I love because I'm going to spend a lot of time here. So when people walk in and say, "Oh my gosh, she's amazing," we love it. it. It gives me so much joy, you know, that they like things that I love. 
So it wasn't about what are they going to think of this space. It was more like something that I love. I'm going to spend my time here. So that's pretty much it. Um, let me take you to the clothing line. There are many uh, people in Uganda, or maybe let's say the diaspora, or people come through and they look up to your designs. Yes. How do you get the orders? Do people come here or they call you? And um, do you have clients that are really attached to you and you're like, this would look nice on how you just make it and send it to them? Uh, tell me more about the clothing line. So I don't have a big following in Uganda because a lot of people here don't really wear kitanga. It's a big trend. Um, my my clients are mainly from Europe. I have a branch now in Switzerland, um, so I make clothes and send them. So when people come, it's very expensive to ship things. I mean, less than a kilo is about three hundred thousand. That's one hundred and eighty dollars. So that's very expensive. So what normally I do is I send suitcases when someone comes from the UK or Switzerland. I give them a suitcase and then they distribute the clothing to the customers. Yeah. You, you are always sure of these sizes, you got used to oh, them yeah. and attached I mean, I, to them. Absolutely, because many, most of them have been, and those that haven't been, I've been to them. So I know what fits and what they like. And you know, people don't really wear kitenge unless they see on me. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I can make a design, it will sit on the rack and they, they don't know what it looks like. But once I wear it, then they say to me, oh my God, see that's amazing, can I have that in different, color, different colors? And then I take pictures of the fabric, it's not easy. I go downtown, pick up the fabric, sometimes, you know, the fabric runs, so we have to wash it first to make sure that the colours don't run, you know, and then, because we don't, we, we have a value for money, we don't want people to send clothes back, see what I mean, so we have to go through the whole process and make sure that the tailoring is right, it's up to European standards, you know, international market. Um. What is the advice that you yeah, that you'd give, uh, especially Ugandans or any other person that's going to watch this? What is the advice you'd give them, especially young girls yeah. and maybe um, women who have been um, who want to start up something or who have not done anything yet, but they feel they can do something? The inspiration uh, moment. I, I I think that nothing comes easy, and if someone had said to me 18 months ago that it was going to be like this. I might not have done it, <laughs> but you just have to be patient and um, if you believe in something, I always say write it down, write down, read over and over and say I want to become this, this is who I want to become, tell yourself that every day and also tell yourself that you can do it. Don't listen to people. I've opened this space, a lot of people come in here, they say, oh Sue, you need to remove that painting and put it on this side. Mm -hmm. Oh, you shouldn't sell this type of drink. But no, this is my space. It's your yeah, space. this is what I, you know, this is what works for me. Mm -hmm. You know, don't come into my home and start telling me how to run my home. Mm -hmm. You know, and usually people that don't have businesses are the ones that are constantly giving advice to others. Exactly, you know what I mean? Exactly. And you're thinking, you, you have no idea about this. <laughs> Who are you to tell me? Mm -hmm. So, and then I also realized that we don't like to support our, each other, you know. That is what I found in Uganda. Mm. My customers are not mainly Ugandans, you know. I don't understand why. No, in most cases, when they see you've done something uh, really nice, there's no. competition. So they try to create the competition. They try to do the same. But, but who's going to do something yeah. like this? <laughs> but it would be so nice for us to support each other, mm. you know. I know like, like the, the, the Jewish community, they will go to their fellow Jews and buy things from the shops, the Indian community. They support each other. Why can't Ugandans do that? I have Nigerian friends who will only buy from Nigerians. And, you know, they go to the Nigerian restaurants. They, oh, you know, let's make the money together. You know what I mean? But then you hear people saying, oh, so Chola, she's already got money. Why should I support her? That kind of negativity. Do you know what I mean? That is wrong. We should build each other. You know, I go to all the bars in Kampala. I, you know, for Wednesdays, I go to Seller's Space. If I know my friend's hosting something, I will support. Even if I don't need the outfit, I will buy it. And that's how it should be. And young people need to know that we need to build each other yeah. as opposed to tearing each other down. Yeah. Exactly. Um, in a summary, I want us to keep it short and sweet. I want you to tell our viewers what to expect at Casa Deloy, what the services that are offered and everything in Europe, and uh, maybe the social media platforms. How can we get to get in touch with Casa Deloy? Because most of our viewers actually are not Ugandans. Okay. Like I told you, so you're going to get uh, maybe some orders from um, 
the US or anywhere, yeah. So you have to leave contacts and maybe the social media platforms. So this is your space, artistic space, um, away from home. So we've have got the boudoir, we've got the sleeping area. It's sort of a creative space. I want people to come here and listen to fabulous music. You can bring your own music. You know, we play it for you. Uh, read an art book, read a magazine, have some wine, we have beer also, have champagne and at the same time we can make an outfit, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and we have the smoking area outside, mm -hmm. so we basically have everything for everyone in here. And you can find us on Twitter, Cassidy Roy UG, uh, Instagram, Cassidy Roy, and on Facebook, Cassidy Roy. That is so perfect and that's so awesome. You can always check out Casa de Roy. I'm just so blessed to, to be seated with, um, with this lady here. <laughs> it's just like an achievement. But don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for all the notifications that will be coming through. Whatever you think about our videos and what we can change about our videos, please don't forget to comment and catch me on Instagram, Morel Lala. For now, I want to say bye-bye and so says, Take care and we look forward to welcoming you here in our fabulous art space and drinking lots of champagne with you. It's my birthday by the way, so <laughs> happy birthday to her twentieth of uh, March. Twentieth Feb. Feb, yeah. Oh. Yeah, twentieth yeah. yeah. okay. <laughs> Feb. Yeah. I turned twenty one today, so I'm <laughs> legally allowed to drink now and I get my driver's permit also today. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs>